Let me ask you about firefighting. What do you think it means to be a great firefighter and a great man, a great human being in a situation like you were in in 9-11? You know, that's, that's kind of a broad term. Like some, you know, you can go to different firehouses and they might have a different definition of what they consider a great firefighter. But I think in the industry as a whole, if you're willing to put everyone else before you, especially your team, you know, as we say, there ain't no I in team, right? It's T-E-A-M and there's no I in there. It's all about those guys and girls next to you. If you can do that, that makes you pretty great. You, you put everything else second and you just run in and you run in with that team for strangers. You know, I, I've had the, the honor of, I spent almost 25 years of my adult life serving humanity, my country, my former city. And the people I worked with were giants. And I don't mean that in height, I mean, but I mean that in spirit and in soul. I saw some of the most heroic, selfless acts. And then I saw some of the behind the scenes that were so impressive. You know, we'd go to a fire around Christmas and a family would lose everything. And even when I was a cop, same thing. You come back either to the police precinct or the firehouse or the EMS station. And someone would put together a collection and say, hey guys, hey Lex, 50 bucks a man. You know, the Smiths down the street just lost everything. We're gonna go get some presents for the kids and some turkeys. And not one of those guys questioned that. And they were making 12, 25 an hour and they still came up with 50 bucks for that family. But see, that's the stuff the press won't show you, right? They don't wanna show that humanity, that soft edge. See, when you're a warrior, you need to have this rough shield, this rough exterior, because if you don't, you die. But a true great firefighter or responder or cop or, or military personnel, they have that rough exterior with that soft underbelly, that, that, that you know, like that, <laughs> I see it. that I see heart, it. right? It's there. And, and, yeah. and that's, to me, the true great ones. Yeah. Some of them... They just have a hard time doing that, you know? There's no shame in, in showing your soft side, you know? Well, you, you got your dad to say I love you back. No, that, right, that was huge, <laughs> man. That, was, that, took, that took me 22 years, like, you know, I mean, So you were a firefighter for 21, almost 22 years. Yeah. What, what, why did you become a firefighter? Oh, my dad, I mean, I, I, I was five years old and I went to his firehouse and then there was these, you know, at the time they looked like giants to me with mustaches and they, you know, and the trucks, truck smelled like smoke and the gear smelled like smoke and the tires and the, you know, the diesel fuel. And I was like, <laughs> this is, this is what I'm going to do. And then, and then they bring you in the kitchen and they stuff you with ice cream and cake yeah. and everything, you know, and then I go home to my mom, you know, shaking with a sugar corn and she's mad at my dad. But yeah, it was just, oh, I was like, I got to do this. It was like, they were like a baseball team in a garage with a truck and these big tools and big coats and helmets. And they were just laughing and having fun. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm doing this. And I knew I was obsessed with it. I mean, I, I was so pissed that the fireman's test came out when I was 14 and I couldn't take it. You had to be 18. And and it, it was done, the, you know, the test was graded and whatever. So my dad, you know, now there's a, a copy circulating because it's, it's old now. And he goes, hey, yeah, yeah, this is what you're in for. And I took it and, I, and I, I, you know, did it like it was real. And I got a 99 and I was so pissed. I said, oh, I want to get hired. He goes, you can't, you're 14. I'm like, <laughs> but I, I wanted, I just wanted to do it so bad. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to help people. I just wanted to be like my dad, you know, like he'd come home smiling as tired as he was. And he fought fires in the sixties and seventies when the city was burning. And he's still as exhausted as he was, he'd still be smiling. I wanted to smile at work and I used to, I, I got paid to laugh and joke. <laughs> I got paid to cry sometimes, but man, we laughed a lot. We really, we, it was the, the chop breaking. It's just, it's just unending and it's great.